Hey, welcome back to another province. Today we are in Tak. Yeah, I just want to pop in in the intro and just set the scene a little bit because as the thumbnail and title suggests, I didn't really have a very good time here and it's all on me. It was 100% on me. It wasn't anything that the people or the province did to me. It was um, manifested within this and uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And as you'll see, when things go wrong, I, I tend to spiral and I just look at things in the wrong way and I'm on my way out of the province going back towards Chiang Mai and I've had a bit of time to think and I wanted my intro to be different because Tak is a beautiful province. I mean, look at this and it's, it's home to beautiful waterfalls, incredible waterfalls actually, and uh, caves that are blue and amazing temples and I didn't really get to see any of that. And what I did see was beautiful, but as you'll see in the video, the things that happened to me kind of fogged my mind and I was unable to really appreciate it. And I'm sorry, I'm really sorry. Well, we, we will go back to Tak Province. Tak Province Redemption will be coming soon. You'll see why. And I hope you enjoy the video regardless, but I just wanted to pop in and tell you that um, I'm a bit of a miserable bastard in this video and I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, let's get into the video and let's see what happened. And uh, let's try to enjoy Tak Province. Okay, it's uh, a bit later than I'd like to be leaving. It's 12 o'clock, but uh, there was a reason. I had to support my boy, Tyson Fury, in the boxing. Yes, mate. Come on, Tyson. And he won. My boy won again, but we all knew he was. But Jesus, what a fight. So we've got 265 kilometers from Mei Seriang along the Burmese border. We're going to follow the, the river, which is the physical border between Thailand and Myanmar, all the way down into the province of Tak. So I'll document it for you, but it is, too, it is going to be about a four hour drive. And I want to get there before dark. So I won't be going crazy. Probably get my head down and just listen to some music and meditate a little bit and enjoy the road. But of course I'll show you some of the highlights. And then we'll be in Tak, baby. Another province. The one thing I have to say out the bat about Tak Province, if you are a motorcyclist enthusiast and you just want to have an incredible few days ride, then drive the 105 from Mei Seriang to Mei Sot. It is about 250 kilometers and <laughs> it's phenomenal. Dreamy and I must have gone up and over three different mountain ranges and the twists and the turns and the incredible amounts of nature in every direction it was just unbelievable and I was practically the only person. We went through a few police checkpoints, maybe three or four, um, however they were, they were never like checking anything, there was nobody there to be honest. There are over a million Burmese refugees living in that area and I did drive past some of the most incredible looking places but I didn't feel comfortable stopping and filming because they had armed military there and things like that um, but I have to say just just take it from me the Mei Hong Song loop from a motorcycling perspective has nothing on the 105 just let it rip and just enjoy the day's ride but as you'll see in the rest of this video, there's not really much going on in TAC other than this road, in my opinion. <laughs> and yeah, eventually I ended up in May Sot, the border town, and uh, found a little cheap guest house, 400 baht, and it was, it was alright, it was what I needed, which was a place to rest, gather my thoughts and get ready for the next day's drive. <sighs> okay, made it. May Sot, TAC province. 
all the way from Mei Hong Song over the past three days. <laughs> it's been a long, fun, beautiful drive, but um, yeah, that road today to here, even though it's not really the, the Mei Hong Song loop, it is an extra 250 kilometers detour continuing south, but it was, uh, it was mind blowing. Unbelievable, to be honest. Couldn't really capture it all. Just wanted to soak it in. Hi. <laughs> I don't know what it is with Thailand's fascination with superheroes, but you can't go to a cafe these days without seeing Spider-Man, Batman, or God knows all these different types of superheroes. Anyway, <laughs> welcome to May Sot. I got here yesterday and um, not really much going on. It's a border town. It's a gateway to Myanmar. In fact, right where I'm looking right now, that little small mountain range, that is the river there is a bridge to Myanmar. I've crossed the border here before in a previous trip when I'd made a video series about backpacking around Myanmar. I'll link it below if you fancy learning about what it's like to travel in Myanmar about two or three years ago now. And that border town, well, it's like every other border town. You know, it's, it's full of interesting and strange characters and you always meet really interesting travelers. Like, check these guys out that I met traveling. You think traveling 77 provinces on a Honda's interesting? check these guys out. All right, so that bus was really long and boring and annoying, but six hours later, we've made it to Mesot. We've just met these two guys, Nick yeah, and Ben. ben. Yeah. There's always someone who's doing something cooler than you. What you guys, what, tell them what you've been up to. Uh, we drove a uh, Volkswagen uh, car from the Netherlands to uh, Burma. How long has it taken? Six months. Oh, six months. <laughs> Get out. 33,000 kilometers. 33,000 kilometers. In yeah. that little thing. 19 flat tires. You make YouTube videos as well? Yeah, what's just the name? some small ones. Yeah, no worries. What's the, what's the name of the channel? Driving the scenic route. Check out these guys. That's amazing, guys. Good luck. But yeah, awesome to meet you guys. Yeah, that's cool. There's always people traveling. Longer, more in-depth, doing something more interesting than you. Every time I've traveled everywhere, I've always met people in hostels and I thought my backpacking trip around Southeast Asia was interesting and then you meet people who are like, oh yeah, I'm walking to China. And you're like, oh, you win. <laughs> anyway, having a nice coffee here at this cafe and they're playing really loud copyright music, so I'm not gonna stay. I'll have this, we'll get on the road. We're gonna head towards Tak, Northern Tak, lots of adventures ahead and um, hopefully the weather picks up because it's miserable. <laughs> So yeah, um, things didn't really pick up and I'll explain more in a minute after the, the next thing that goes wrong. So I just want to give a little bit of context, okay? <laughs> I am fully aware that I'm living my dream, which was to, you know, drive around Thailand on a little motorbike and be free and just drive wherever I wanted and be in control of everything, you know, my life, my, I'm my own boss. And there are so many days, almost every day when I'm driving, that I feel such high emotion, such relief and such gratitude and love for Thailand and for the country. And um, just, I just feel loads of joy <laughs> when I'm driving, honestly. I'm always so happy. This day, though, for some reason, I think the long drive from Mei Hong Song, even though the road was beautiful, sometimes I get lonely, you know, and I, I, I touched on it a little bit in Mei Hong Song. Going to the night market and it was gone, or well, it was basically gone, it was only one little area. And being in the Mei Hong Song loop, I had so many memories of previous trips with big groups of friends and, um, you know, backpackers and travelers alike in every town, especially in places like Pai. And going through four or five towns that are some of the most social and, you know, hubs of entertainment and nightlife and bars. And anyway, being there and not meeting anybody or seeing anyone and being on these empty roads in tack. 
I don't know what happened. It just it just made me feel melancholy. It made me feel lonely. It made me feel far away from anyone or anything. And it was getting to me. And the the fact that TAC is so big and spread out as well. This is one of the biggest provinces. And you know, it was three and a half hours drive to the nearest town, and then it was four hours to Maysot. And then this ride here that you're seeing, this was just from Maysot to Tack Town. And on the map it looked insignificant, but on my little Honda Dream, it took four hours. And it was just so lonely, guys. So sometimes I just, yeah, this is how I feel sometimes. And then, at lunch, something else happened. <laughs> Excuse the sneezing, I just had a very spicy, peppery noodle soup and I was just trying to fix some stuff, guys. I've had a bit of a nightmare. This province of Tak is causing me a couple of problems. The first one is, it is massive. This is one of the biggest provinces in Thailand. In fact, it borders Chiang Mai and then in the south, it borders Kanchanaburi, which is like, one hour away from Bangkok <laughs> so this province is so long it takes about nine or eight hours to drive from top to bottom and you know yesterday we drove for like four hours to get to Maysot just took me another three hours to get to the town of Tak itself I mean the only thing this province <laughs> and I'm not having a go okay but not every province is going to be a banger Okay, even the little ones I've been having such a good time with. So when I saw Tak, I was like, oh, it's massive. There'll be loads to do and see. Guys, there's nothing here. Nothing. It's so massive. And yet when you're on the roads, there's no interesting towns, not much to see. I mean, this is the main town and it's got a river, it's got a bridge. It's kind of bit boring sorry tack I am gonna give you another chance though but the second thing was I bloody lost my phone Ugh. so this morning when I was in Maison and I was having that cappuccino I think I left my phone there so I've just used my MacBook contacted a friend of mine Sam who lives in Nakhon Si Tamara remember him he speaks Thai he has a phone called them up and they found my phone and they're going to mail it to me back in Chiang Mai because I'm going to drive back to Chiang Mai tomorrow so now because I don't have my phone I don't have navigation I can't fly the drone loads of things you know what it's like when you're traveling right things tend to happen in threes so I was already kind of like driving aimlessly today thinking is there anything to do in this province then I've lost my phone. So what's the third thing gonna be? <laughs> so we're gonna get on the highway, we're gonna keep going up north. We're gonna go to Bumi Dol Dam, which I hope I can find through road signs because now I don't have any sat nav or anything. This is the life sitting in the back of a truck. So what do you care? So bye mate. Okay. So you can see, well, I can see as well, looking back at this footage, that I was in a miserable mood. You know, I was, I was feeling down, I was feeling lonely, I'd lost my phone, and TAC wasn't really popping, if I can be polite. Look, you'll go to TAC, you'll see. The roads, um, especially the 105 earlier on in this video, it's just incredible, just unbelievable. It's arguably one of the most beautiful areas of Thailand but there's just nothing there and there's no one there and you know when you lose your phone and you're already in a bad mood 
like I just said there, you're wondering, okay, what's going to be the third thing? Because these things come in threes. That's what they say in England anyway. So I get back on the road and uh, I'm heading for the Bumi Bol Dam, King Bumi Bol, Rama 9, the, the best of the kings, you know, the, the Thailand's number one king. And, um, you know, rest in peace. He, he was a legend. And I thought, okay, if they've named a dam after this guy, this is going to be epic. And it was only a 35, 45 kilometer detour, but it was still another 100 kilometers away. And this is where I started to just, just spiral into a mini depression. <laughs> because I, I just, I was feeling lonely. And then I just got on this road. And as you can see, look how straight these roads are. There's like no turns. It was completely straight and boring and no cars and no turns and nothing to stimulate me. I couldn't listen to music. I couldn't listen to an audiobook, And I was trapped in my own thoughts, which is not good when you're a little bit upset and you know I just started thinking about my mum and my sister and a new baby and my dad and Nan and I hope she's okay and how's Covid at home and when am I going to be able to go home and you know all these like all of the sad things in my life <laughs> come to me when I'm driving and you might be listening to this going Jesus Paddy you're driving around Thailand, why are you so miserable? I'm not always miserable. I'm most of the time I'm off I'm off my head, you know, I'm having a great time. But you know, part of this channel is documenting this trip and sometimes I'm a miserable bastard. <laughs> anyway, we get to the dam and guess what? It's not good. <laughs> Be open. Please be open. Is this? Holy cap. Yes, thank you. Huh? I can't go this way. Okay, I can't go the way that everybody wants to go, right? Why would you not go over the dam? Why would you have a road over the dam that you can't drive on? Did I just drive all the way here for nothing? <laughs> Where is this going to take me? Oh, this province is so big. There is nothing here. And nobody here. Can't even get an ice cream. Can't even get a bottle of water. So yeah, I just want to pop in one more time and explain something here because this is where this is why I wanted to say I'm sorry at the beginning of the video and I want to say an apology again now because I'm such a miserable idiot <laughs> and I not only let it cloud my mind and I mean look how beautiful this place is and all I can do is whinge and moan and I'm sorry and like an idiot, okay, because you'll see I, I give up and leave in a minute, okay. This isn't the, the, the actual dam. I, I got to the dam, I got to the entrance, went through security, and I thought that that little piece of concrete was the dam, but it, it, it's not, guys. You know, when I came to make the thumbnail, and when I came to remember, like, hang on, I thought this dam was, a, was different to this. And the next day, when I'd driven all the way back to the next place, that's when I realized that I hadn't gone far enough. I just needed to go about another three, four minutes up the road and I would have got to this place, the actual dam, the beautiful, incredible engineering marvel, really, let's be honest, Thailand's biggest dam. I would have loved it. 
But I was just, you know, my head wasn't there, and I just did, I just couldn't just check my phone. From I didn't check the map. I didn't think straight. I wasn't in the right mindset at all, guys. <sighs> I'm really sorry, Tack. You know, on a different day with a different mindset, when I'd probably be like, "Oh, it's beautiful here," and I could fly the drone, and then I could get a drink, and I would be happy to be here. But this province, you know, we left May Seriang in Mei Hong Song two days ago. I've driven 650 kilometers on Dreamy and driven through two towns in 650 kilometers. Ugh. This part of Thailand, Western Thailand, is too big, it's too spread out. I like the smaller provinces. I like it when things are together. Because obviously I'm not on a big bike, I can't just eat 250 kilometers and feel nothing I you know every hundred kilometers takes me two hours I do miss the king Rama 9 what a legend let's see what this is we'll give it one last chance temple is still under construction they're still plastering and uh, finishing this art piece and it's absolutely gorgeous even though it's unfinished got jewel can you see the jewel and the dragon's eye that's very cool you see then obviously not going to spare no expense on a monument this close to you know the great king Anything with his name on it. I mean, it's very rare they call anything Bobby Paul, you know? Is this the dam? Is that it? I thought it was massive. This can't be it, can it? Wow, is that it? Is that really it? <laughs> oh, God. It's so hot and I'm so, I'm in a bad mood. So there you have it guys, that unfortunately is my Tak province video. I um, left with my tail between my legs and drove unbelievably for 250 kilometers more that day and I ended up back in Chiang Mai <laughs> in the old town in a little guest house and I was a broken man. I don't know, I was so stubborn and I was such a bad mood, I just kept driving all night. Anyway, I just want to apologise. You know, I was miserable. I was down in the dumps, I was sad and I was lonely and I, I let it all out on the province and the content. I didn't, I didn't, you know, I was at that beautiful dam and I couldn't see the beauty and I was on those beautiful roads and all I could see and feel was negativity and I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I, I know you're going to slate me in the comments. Oh, you're such a miserable bastard. Um, and that's okay, I'll take it. Because I deserve it. Because I was. And I'll hopefully bounce back. In fact, I promise I'll bounce back. And I, I, the next few videos, I'm going to be bang on form. But I can't promise I won't be a miserable bastard again. <laughs> anyway, it's life. It's travel. This is the real deal here on the channel Paddy Doyle no bullshit or as little bullshit as possible see you in the next one <laughs>